Hi, I'm James Bruce from MakeUseOf.com and this is the Screeware 3D printer, a $1,300 device that began life as a Kickstarter and aims to be a 3D printer for everyone. Now that's quite an ambitious goal and since I'm a person that fits into the category of everyone, I've spent the last couple of months testing it out. And courtesy of Screeware, we are giving away our test device to one lucky winner. Click on the link in the description to find the competition widget or keep watching to find out what we thought of the printer and to get the giveaway code for bonus entries in the competition. As you can see, it's a gorgeously designed, though rather heavy, full metal machine. It features a spool holder around the side here, which you can unclip to hide the filament spools in. However, if you purchase one kilogram filament spools, they won't fit in and the grill won't go back over. It has a unique magnetic print bed, which just pulls away and you can flex it to pull off your print. Now, anyone who has experience of other print surfaces where you typically need to take a knife to them will really appreciate this feature, especially for beginners. The print bed is manually leveled using these three slightly awkward to reach dials that are underneath the bed. However, it's a simple enough process and you shouldn't need to repeat it more than once every few weeks or whenever you've moved the printer. The device connects over Wi-Fi or Ethernet though this is currently limited to connecting it to the Scree Market online 3D marketplace. Now this is a stunningly simple to use system and what it offers is literally one click printing. You browse through the market, you find a model you like and you hit print. It will be automatically sent to the printer and then begins printing. That's it, there's no slicing to do, no options to mess around with, just click print. Now this is an incredibly powerful onboarding tool to anyone who isn't familiar with 3D printing and just wants to get started right away. Aside from bed leveling, there was absolutely no other adjustments or anything I needed to do to print my first model. There's also a front USB port here in which you can insert your own USB drive and load G-code files directly from it. However, this is strictly for a USB drive. It can't currently be connected directly to a computer, either over the USB or over the network connection. So you can't print directly from programs like Microsoft 3D Builder or Simplify 3D. You do need to output the G-code files first and then either load them through the USB port or through the online cloud system. Now, if you don't know what a G-code file is, that's probably because models you typically download off of the internet tend to be STL files, which contain the actual 3D model data. Now, before you can print an STL file on any printer, it needs to be sliced and a G-code generated. These are the instructions for the machine, which tell it exactly where to move and how much filament to push out, what temperature it should be at, etc. To get from STL to a G-code file, you need a program called a slicer, so-called because it literally slices up the model into layers and instructions that the printer can understand. Now, since I began testing this printer about three months ago, Screeware has in fact released their own easy to use online slicing tool. And I do mean easy to use. You literally just load your model in your STL file, resize it and then hit print. In terms of actual print quality, what you can get can be really quite good. The metal case really helps there as it keeps the printer sturdy and reduces the vibrations, which can introduce small errors into print. You are limited to printing in PLA filaments, but this isn't necessarily a bad thing for a home user as ABS, the other most popular material, can produce toxic fumes. However, this is going to be limiting for pro users. Despite the relatively large size of the printer, the print bed itself is only 15 centimeters squared by 13 centimeters high, which is again big enough for most beginners, but also going to be quite limiting for pro users. And the magnetic print bed design, while it has its advantages, does however exclude the possibility of having a heated print bed, which means that actually you're unlikely to be able to print models that are the full size of the print bed simply because they'll cool down quickly and start to warp up at the sides. It's a good starter size for a home printer then. So should you buy the Screeware 3D printer? 
Well, that's a really difficult one to answer. On the one hand, the Scree Market is a fantastic onboarding tool for getting absolute beginner users printing their first 3D model. And their easy to use slicer, while limited, certainly gets the job done if you want to print something else not on their market. Once you advance past that and want a little more control over your prints, then you can get some default settings profiles for the most popular third party software from Screeware themselves. However, I did find myself wanting some kind of intermediate tool between the extreme simplicity of one click printing from Scree Market and the bewildering number of options that you'll find in something like Cura or Slicer. The hardware is beautiful and really wouldn't look out of place in any home office or school environment. And the magnetic print bed really makes it easy to get your prints off of it when you've finished. But on the flip side, it's a really pricey $1,300 device for what amounts to essentially some fairly basic 3D printing technology that can be found elsewhere on other lower cost printers, albeit not in such an attractive package. Although the printer is perfect for absolute beginners, I think that market might find it difficult to spend that much on a new hobby. Pro users as well probably wouldn't want to spend over a thousand dollars on something that say didn't even have a heated print bed and could only print in PLA. And while it is definitely the easiest printer to get started with, that doesn't mean that it won't be entirely maintenance or trouble free. The print head can still clog and the filament can get stuck in the feed mechanism. I've had to pull the side off about five times now to pull out bits of filament that got stuck in there. Now this is pretty much true of every printer you buy. I'm just saying that don't expect a $1,300 printer to be completely free of all of this. There are still fundamentals to having a 3D printer that you need to know about. Anyway, thanks for watching. And if you'd like to be in with a chance to win this printer, please head on over to makeuseof.com, click the link in the description and type in the code SCREE for bonus entries. If you enjoyed this review and would like to be notified whenever we publish our twice weekly giveaways, reviews and technology tutorials, please hit subscribe. Thank you again from all of us at makeuseof.com.